Brooke here from the Vintage Gardener. Welcome back to my channel. So tonight I'm going to go over the 17 varieties of tomatoes that are going to be featured in my garden this year. If you guys saw my YouTube video yesterday and you and you're on Podbean and you subscribe to the podcast, then you know that I posted a new podcast called Holy Tomato. And so I went over things like, you know, what tomatoes are supposed to taste like, you know, the uh, flavor profiles, um, you know, what terms like determinate versus indeterminate mean, and, you know, and harvest, like harvest times, that sort of thing. So I'm not gonna go over that again in this video. Um, I'm just going to talk about the 17 versions. Now, with some of the terms, if you're interested in understanding what it is, I would recommend that you put this on pause, go listen to the podcast, and come back so that you actually understand what it is that I'm what I'm talking about. So this year, I definitely messed up with the t <laughs> the tomatoes in terms of picking my varieties. I did the research for that podcast after I had purchased my seeds. And because I had done that, it was, I really didn't, I didn't think it through as carefully as I should have. And so what I think is probably gonna happen this year is that I'm going to have huge gluts of tomato harvest at a certain point in time in the, in the summer. And I'm just going to be overwhelmed. And next year when I do this, I'm going to plan better. I'm going to have, um, I'm going to make sure I have, you know, very early, early, mid-season and late. And I'm, I'm, so I'm going to stage it so that I do have consistent harvest. But, you know, I don't have to worry about, for example, things you know, the harvest all at once and then the bushes are done because they're determined and then I pull them and have huge like gaps in the garden. So I just did not plan well this year because this is my first year really hardcore going into tomatoes like this. So uh, with that said, let's get right on into this. Okay guys, so the first up is very early tomatoes. So I was a total bad girl, did not order a single very early tomato. So next year I'm going to work on that. I found a great website to get information plus suggestions for things. It's called the World Tomato Society. Who knew? <laughs> the world, there is a World Tomato Society. And so they have a lot of great stuff, a lot of great information, recipes, and that sort of thing. So it's definitely a, a website to go check out. Um, if you join, become a member, you get access to all the articles. Um, you can become like a just a member for like the like the summer months. So anyway, I haven't decided if I'm gonna join, but it would be kind of nice to get like the full the full, you know, recipe list, so to speak. So I was a bad girl, no, very early, but I did get some early and ones that I would say are mid or early to mid season. Uh, so the first one up is a spoon tomato. Now the spoon tomato is a indeterminate variety. Uh, this is supposed to be a bold classic red tangy tomato flavor. Um, and from what I've seen online, people who have tried this, they say they don't, these little tomatoes don't make it into their house. These are micro tomatoes. Um, the size of these from what I've seen from reviews online are like, uh, uh, you know, like the typical green peas. So they're very tiny. A lot of people just eat them in the garden as snacks, like, you know, while they're working, they're snacking on them. So um, this will be really, so this is, I'm looking forward to this one. I think it's going to be really interesting. And I think for kids, this would be a great one for kids because I think kids are going to be really intrigued by something that's pea sized but is actually a tomato. Uh, then the next one is called a tomato white currant. Uh, this is also considered to be a microfruit. Um, it's barely an inch in diameter. Um, it's creamy white and yellow, and it's supposed to be sweet. So I'm, these two are going to be my, um, my I guess you say, micro tomato uh, comparison. So we'll see. Um, like I said, it's going to be interesting to see what I can use for each of them. I would imagine probably both of these would taste good in a salad uh, with the white currant one from what I saw. I think I saw somebody make like a savory chutney type thing out of this one. So we'll see. Uh, then let's talk about mid-season. So the first one up is Heinz 1350 VF. 
Um, I, this is a hybrid by the Heinz company. It's great for sauces and ketchups. Uh, this one is a determinate is a determinate variety. So that means a single harvest over a couple of weeks. Once this is done, you can pull this out. So uh, if you have a small gardening space, and you need to basically get a harvest and and keep you know turning it over so you can get multiple crops. This is probably going to be a good one for you. Um, this one just, it doesn't really, it's, it's productive, it's disease resistant, but in terms of taste, it doesn't really give you any indication of what the taste is, but considering the fact that it's for ketchup, I'm going to, I'm going to guess that it's probably just a balanced tomato flavor. Uh, the next one up is tomato orange peach. Uh, this one is also, this is indeterminate. And so, um, it, it's light with a fuzzy skin to match. It, they consider it to be an imitation, um, an imitation peach. And this one is supposed to be very, is supposed to be very sweet. So sweet meaning that it's got more sugars and less acid. So I cannot wait to see this one. For some strange reason, I thought when I was looking at this online, I thought somebody made some sort of like imitation marmalade using this. So we'll see. And uh, then the next one is called. Oh. I'm sorry. Sorry, fly. Uh, the next one is called Green Zebra. Uh, this is a green one with stripes. I tried this one before. I harvested it too early. Uh, the trick to this one is that there is going to be um, an, a slight amber blush when it's actually ripe, fully ripe, which I did not know at the time because I was I bought it as a plant. I didn't grow it from seed. Uh, so this one is supposed to be um, sweet, and not too acidic, well balanced. So, yeah. Uh, then next we have the um, cream sausage tomato. Okay, so this is a nice sauce tomato because you can tell because it's got a you know plum shape or elongated shape. Okay, so this one has a sweet flavor. Now, from what I saw from reviews online, this one people add to regular like plum sauce, like excuse me, plum tomatoes to kind of balance out the, I guess the more classic tomato, like more like tangy, more acidic thing. They say it kind of adds, it's like, um, it mellows everything out. Uh, so I am looking forward to seeing how this one is gonna taste in a, in some sauce. So this is a determinant variety. Oh, and by the way, guys, I just realized uh, the green zebra, it's indeterminate. So, yeah. Um, so, mm, I, I, maybe I should have started two batches of the determinant one since you can pull the bushes afterwards. We'll see. Uh, so then the next one is called uh, black plum. Uh, this is a indeterminate variety. Um, so this one, let's see. It just says it has a rich, full-bodied flavor, excellent for sauce drying or eating fresh. So um, it is a one ounce uh, mahogany brown elongated fruit. So uh, this probably is gonna have more of a classic tomato flavor. So it, I'll see how it pairs with the cream sausage. Um, I'm gonna be doing a lot of, I should be doing a lot more cooking this year. So I would be very interested to see how this one pairs with a cream surprise. And quite frankly, I might do a dish where I just use the cream surprise tomato by itself, just so I can get a feel for how it tastes before I start doing uh, mixes of it. So that's that one. And then I have a white cherry, cherry tomato. I got this one from Lowe's, it's by Bonnie's Plants. Um, aside from the fact that it's kind of like, it's a cherry t tomato that you're going to use in either snacks or, you know, in your salads, they don't really give any indication of the flavor profile. Um, they just, but they do say that you can roast them for glorious golden bruschetta. So I might try that because that's actually sounds really good. Okay. Then these, the, the next couple tomatoes are, um, mid to late season varieties. 
Uh, so this one is two in one. So it is the yellow brandy wine and the red brandy wine, which are beefsteak tomatoes. Uh, both of these are indeterminate types. Now the yellow brandy wine um, is supposed to be a balance of sweet and tart. The red brandy wine says it has a rich, well-balanced tomato flavor. So I feel like I've had brandy wine, the red one. I've never tried the yellow. So this will be, you know, this will be interested, interesting. Um, beef steak tomatoes are really good, especially like on tomato, like not tomato. Well, you can make a tomato sandwich, but like, you know, burgers and that sort of thing. So that should be a, a delicious one. And then next I have Black Beauty. Okay, now Black Beauty is an indeterminate variety. Um, it's the world's darkest tomato, and they said it's so dark that some of the tomatoes turn a solid blue-black on the skin. Now, this one, they did not put any pre uh, flavor profile information on it, but uh, if you guys remember from the podcast, the dark tomatoes tend to be the ones that have a more smoky, earthy flavor, so... Um, yeah, I can't wait to I can't wait to see how this one tastes. Um, based upon the size of the fruit in their hand, it you know this is probably it's probably I guess a decent slicer or you know good for salads or anything. But I'll see once I start tasting it. Okay, now here are the ones that are late varieties. So uh, first one up is the Arkansas Traveler. Okay. So this one is indeterminate and it's a Southern heirloom. So um, it, it gives high yields even in the dry and high heat, you know, temperatures you would find in the South. So it's considered to be full flavored and medium sized pink red tomatoes. Um, so it doesn't really say what type of uses, but I'll see once I start cutting it over whether or not it's got a lot of gel or, you know, low amounts of gel and seed because that will really determine what you actually use it for. Once again, you'll have to watch the podcast or listen to the podcast if you want to know what that means. So the next one up is called the White Beauty or Snowball. Um, this is also in um, an indeterminate variety. Uh, this one is a half a pound slicer. So that's a pretty good sized fruit. It said it has a sweet citrus flavor and is more complex than many of the white types. So I will definitely be comparing this to the white cherry as well as the white currant. So um, it, this will be really interesting. And it's gonna be really interesting to see how these taste on different types on sandwiches. Cause you know, maybe depending upon what type of sandwich I'm eating, I may want a different type of tomato. So once again, a lot of eating this year. Um, then another one I got, I got another green tomato. It's called uh, Green Giant. Uh, this They said this is the most productive, best tasting tomato in our trials. And it says it's large, one pound, emerald, green fruit, sweet and juicy. So it'll be interesting to see how this compares to the green zebra because the green zebra is supposed to be sweet. But from what I've heard, the green zebra is, is supposed to have more citrusy overtones to it but you know we'll see uh then i got persimmon uh persimmon is an indeterminate variety um this one is really large oh i guess you this one is kind of considered to be extra large because um the, the fruits which are orange can be 12 to 16 ounces but it can weigh up to two pounds so that's a massive tomato um so yeah, that'll be an interesting one too. I think that's going to be that. Yeah, that's going to be like a slicer tomato. Uh, then I got a tomato. It's called Korean Long, and this is what it looks like. Um, this one is supposed to be unique, tasty, and versatile because you can use it for sauces or for slicing. Um, it has meaty flesh and superb flavor. Um, it's pinkish red, and it's between like six to fourteen ounces. So it's, I mean, it's a good size. Um, and it's basically a really nice um, crack resistant paste tomato. So I can't wait to see the flavor profile on this one. Um, once again, it'll be interesting to see if this one will pair nicely with the cream sausage tomato to make a sauce. And last but not least, I have Sar Rolois. 
and that is how you pronounce it. I actually went to, I went to like a French pronunciation website. So it's Sar Rolla. And I actually listened to this French person on YouTube pronounce it. So this is a bicolored, it's really huge. It, uh, the, the, the tomato can be between 10 to 24 ounces. And so this was the winner of their 2020 taste tests on Baker Creek. Um, so it says it's sweet, fruity, complex flavor with just the right acidity. It says it has tropical, it's tropical sweet, and, but it's high in antioxidants. So I'm not really surprised that this one is considered to be tropical because if you listen to the podcast, uh, by color varieties tended to be a little bit more fruity in terms of flavor. Okay guys, so that is it for the 17 varieties. Um, I'm really interested to see what you guys are growing this year. Uh, drop me a line in the comments, tell me what you're growing. Um, if you guys have had any experience with any of the ones that I'm growing, let me know whether or not you like, I mean, you liked it or not. I mean, at the end of the day, taste is one of those things that's very individual, but you know, for something, if something had a really mealy texture or something, like let me know. So at least I kind of know what to expect. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to this. Um, I know one person, I think it was Garden Girl, said she's doing 18 varieties and um, I'm sure there's plenty of other people out there like the, us who are trialing way too many tomatoes this year. So I know some of you guys are probably wondering, what are you going to do with all those tomatoes? Cause you're just one person. Um, well, first off, I did start a lot of plants. I think it's like a hundred or so. Um, some are for me, some are going to my secretary, uh, some are going from to Jen from Forever Blooms with Jennifer because, uh, she is, she's an attorney like me, but we do different areas of law, but she's been really swamped lately. And so she hasn't been able to start stuff. So since I was starting to met so many, I was like, Hey, I got, I got you covered. <laughs> so, and there's more vegetables that I'm starting. So I'm like, yeah, I got your vegetables taken care of. Don't worry about it. Um, and then of course, um, you know, if, I forgot what you have to Google, but there are a number of food banks that accept fresh produce um, from people's gardens. Um, I can't even remember what the name of the website is, um, but search for it. I know there's one in Voorhees, which is about um, 25 minutes away from me. So if you have access, you can donate to that. There is, um, there is a church around the corner that has a food pantry. So I am going to reach out to them to see if number one, they'll take extra produce. But on top of that, if I have extra plants, you know, I'd be, I would ask them if I could, Hey, could I donate some of these plants? Because somebody might, would, might really enjoy growing their own um, tomato because, you know, I mean, food scarcity is an issue. And if you're at a food pantry, you know, unfortunately, I think things like fresh produce, like, and especially like things were organic and that sort of thing, that tends to be out of the reach of people, of a lot of people who are going to, uh, you know, to food banks, which is, it's unfortunate. So I will probably, I will definitely be giving away a lot, but hey, you know what? Um, there really isn't a need for food poverty, you know, especially if you're, if you're a gardener, like, you know, you produce so much, so much additional, you know, in your garden that, you know, it's always great to be able to bless someone else with it. So anyway, you guys, that's it for today's episode. If you wouldn't mind very much, can you hit that subscribe button, like the video, share it, comment, help me with the face the YouTube algorithm. Cause the more, you know, subscriptions I get, the more activity on the, the videos, it pushes it up in the rankings and it'll help me get some more subscribers. So anyway, guys, I'll see you guys in the next video, which will be back to, you know, regular plants. <laughs> I'm going to start uh, potting some things up into the next size pot simply because uh, they're outgrowing their containers and there are some more things that I need to start. So I'll see you guys later. Bye.